I'm Jeff. And this is a recap video for our fourth and final class of transitions between Jukin and Ballroom and Blues for Swing Ann Arbor in March 2013. In this class, we uh, wrapped up everything we talked about in the first two weeks, and we spent some time talking about two related uh, but slightly distinct notions. First of all, we talked about uh, continuity of, of motion. So this was picking up where we left off last week. We just wanted to remind you that we don't just uh, reach you know, uh, all the dots. It matters the path that we take through the dots when we connect them. Right? Life is, is not just about where you wind up, but it's about the journey to get there. So remember in all of these movements, like last week, right, we want to, to make sure we flow all the way through okay, these movements. That was big idea number one. Uh, big idea number two is it dancing through all of your movements. Uh, so this is related to the idea that uh, we, we recommend that as opposed to coming into the dance as lead and follow, we come in as two dancers. We're both capable of dancing to the music, but then we just so happen to choose the role, the secondary role of lead and follow. As a lead, even though we're responsible for all of the directions, we don't want to let that interfere with the fact that we're still dancing through the movements. And followers, we want to, we want to come in as dancers and make sure that we can still, so when we're dancing, we can still follow what the lead is doing, but we're not just hitting And uh, we, we explored that with the fishtail uh, move that we had last week. We were able to, to get into these fishtails. Okay. And then we separated. And we were both solo dancing, but connected to each other. Visually, so we're looking at the same direction, or looking in each other's direction. And then we connect back up. But when we connect back up, we make sure not to lose our solo dancing, our individual dancing. We don't compromise that for lead and follow. Okay? So we had to explore that just to, to, to juxtapose the dancing versus lead and follow. We encourage you to then take this, this feeling of, of dancing and think, put it everywhere, but this is a, a very explicit place to, to, to start. Um, and uh, we talked a little bit about why this is valuable. Uh, so first of all, uh, from a lead's perspective, uh, it's a little bit, well, maybe arguably, more fun to dance with someone who's also dancing, as opposed to just going through all the motions that, that you sort of set. Um, and as a lead, we're always looking for inspiration, not just from the music, but from our partner. So if our partner's dancing, Right? We, we can be influenced by their movement. And this is related to the idea of how follows can influence the dance. Uh, if follows are just simply dancing within the structure of the dance. Um, you have... uh, so, yeah, so follows, it's a lot more fun if, they, if we're continuing movement and we're following and not just leading what the lead is doing. Uh, so we wanted to do a little demo uh, how it looks different when I'm following, so I'm still doing my continuity of movement and I'm following the lead, but I'm not dancing on my own. So, this is week one. Okay, now uh, we'll try it with Sarah dancing through the same movement. And you see how my dancing through the movement really affected what the lead was doing. So I wasn't controlling, I didn't change things like wave shifts, but visually, And this is something that, that uh, you can maybe think about for future.
future classes, uh, to what extent uh, leads do you leave open uh, room for the follow? So the more room you leave open, the more that they can dance and, and uh, express their own, own uh, interpretation of the music, um, still, while still being true to, to, the, uh, to the structure of, of the, the partnership. Right, so then after we talked about all of these things, uh, we had you guys practice putting these ideas, continuity of motion and dancing through your movements into all of the movements we did in this series. So uh, that was week one, week two, and week three things where we transitioned in and out of Jukin and ballrooming style uh, blues. Uh, and Yeah, and we, we also talked a little bit about how Leads and follows can both make it um, make it easier for their partner to have continuous movement or or dance through their movement. So if the lead if the lead leads things where the follows well is following the follows momentum, then the follow can have continuous movement. But if the lead does things that are jolty, then it's going to be hard for the follow to. So remember last week, um, so on this, what, what you're saying, so last week we said on these fishtails, leads don't start the fishtails until the, the follow is ready. So that depending on quickly the follow turns, then sometimes you might have to wait an extra moment. So this is part of allowing room for that continuity. Okay. Anything uh, else? And then, and then for the dancing, just uh, only, like you don't need to, to be super toned or controlling of the follow, so just use the amount that you need to lead the moves that you want and then have be, the follow free to add on. Be minimalist in your connection. Okay. So I think that's it. I think so. Alright, well you guys did a great job. We encourage you to look back at all of the old recap videos and look at this, keep practicing, and we'll see you next time.